Hello to your ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. I heard the mockingbird making the go away snake sound over and over again over here by the pomegranate tree in the nature preserve just now. So I came to see what was going on and the mockingbird had chased a snake over into my backyard which is not my favorite sort of thing. So I took a look and, and uh, I saw the tail end of the snake disappearing under a box in the backyard and then I went to get my snake catching gear and uh, when I came back I couldn't find the snake it was hiding so um, just now I tiptoed back again and I saw it's climbed into a, a metal container over here I saw its tail disappear into there it's a good sized snake um, but I can't get to it right now so I'm thinking uh, I'll go snake catching later on in the afternoon when the snake makes its appearance once again. So we'll see what happens. There it is there. Can you see it? I got my snake catcher and my snake catching stick. But from the look of the head of that snake, it's not poisonous as far as I can tell. So maybe we'll just catch a glimpse of it uh, on its way off the property, off the backyard. So we'll get to know it a little bit better. We'll see what happens. Uh, there it is, my snake catching equipment. Now, preferentially, this stick here would be about six inches longer and a little bit thinner and not tapered at the end. It would be more like a forest stick. And there's my snake catching equipment there. Now, I have found in the past that this snake catching equipment um, injures the, the neck of the snake and makes it very difficult for it to breathe. So if you have this stuff, you have to very carefully regulate the pressure as it presses on the neck of the snake. Otherwise, the snake will die or become uh, uh, stressed out for lack of oxygen. So you may be wondering, what's the snake catching stick for? Well, that's my preferred method for catching snakes. And I figured it out at about seven years of age in my childhood while I was catching snakes in the woods for this reason and that. And uh, the way to do it is to break off a stick that still has some green in it so it's supple and it won't if you put it on the ground it won't break or fracture it needs to be a strong stick about as wide as that dowel was but a little less so and a little bit longer and you just uh, when the snake when the snake attacks and it's stretched out on the ground after the attack you just uh, gently but firmly and very quickly lay the end of the stick or the dowel on the neck of the snake and you will find that it tries very hard to wriggle free so very quickly what you have to do especially if it's a poisonous snake is place the fingers of your other hand very firmly on the snake's neck behind the stick or dowel not on the side next to the head or the fangs I guess you get and then take it and put it in your snake container and I will show you what my preferred snake container is okay now this probably looks to you like a regular garbage can but it's also my preferred snake toting container because it has these locking grooves on the lid so if you quickly put the snake in before it has a chance to leap out which seems unlikely considering the depth of the container you just close it and then and then lock the uh, lock the grooves really well okay and then since you're going to be transporting it in the back seat of your car you probably want to do something else to make sure that that snake can't get out in case you make a quick turn and that and the container over turns in the back seat especially if it has a rattlesnake in it so the thing to do I feel is just put some duct tape on here there there and there before you put this container in the back seat of your car upright of course then when you get to the release area it's it'll be pretty easy to release the snake because there's very few snakes as tall as this it can leap straight out of a container I've never seen one so 
if you carefully replace the the container where you want the snake to be let out and then carefully remove the lid and then quickly step back and get out of the way and and overturn it right. that's a chance for the snake to get free and I always find the snake climbs out right away but a few may be scared in which case you might have to you might have to turn the container upside down like that and then walk away see what I mean now catching a snake requires a great deal of courage and one thing that you cannot do when you go to to grab the neck of the snake with either your snake catching instrument or else your dowel or stick is you cannot hesitate he who hesitates is lost you must act decisively and with no more pressure than necessary in order to catch your snake without being bitten so this is just a warning to you young people who might like to try it out. Let an adult try it first and let them show you how to do it. And then when you feel perfectly confident, start with a snake that's not poisonous. And do your best not to murder it because there are not that many snakes here in the Santa Monica Mountains. And they're, they're not that rare, but they're not that prevalent either. So. We want to try and keep our wildlife alive and release it in a place that's approved. You can find out more about where to release those snakes uh, by talking to the, the Park Service. Well, God bless you all. Keep you safe and be with you through all your days.